Today we're going to be making this fence that has lots of visibility and I really think is deer and rabbit proof. Okay, let it let it loose, Ethan. The hog, the auger's hanging kind of like this right now. So I'm gonna back it over here, and you guys need to push it level. Will it be easy to push? It's not hard. Ethan did it earlier. You need to push it on the bottom, though, not up here. And then you lay the level up against it, and you want the level to be the bubble in the middle. Okay. And then I'm going to lower it right on the X. So go ahead and back up, and I'm going to drive it over here. We got all the holes done and we're going to try to set some posts right now. The kids got the first one ready to go in this corner, but we have some issues. Exhibit A, water table in Michigan is super high. It's actually right there. That is the water level. So we have a pump behind you right there as you can see. We've got to pump it out and then I do think that we need to clear away the uh, the debris or the dirt that we pulled out of these holes so that we can get an, another two or three inches with that auger to get down to the 42 inches that we need or that I would like to get to at least here in Michigan. So that is what we're going to do for now. It's a little bit chilly on. We got our firm grip gloves on. We got our hats on and we're going to get going and hopefully stay warm. First post, going in, not the mud, get the dirt. And then I can see, as long as you hold it tight, like this one, I can see you need to come this way. I can bang on this side now and move it. That was really deep, look at that. Okay, move. Oh, 
This video has been brought to us by Carolina Shoe, built for work in the official workwear of the DIY Tyler channel and family. Well, I mean, not really the official, but they have been a great long-term sponsor of the channel, and you guys can save 20% off various select pairs of boots using the code DIYTYLER20 with the boots selected using the URL in the link below. Thanks, Carolina, for sponsoring the channel. So the bubbles are together. Push it, push it where it belongs. So you're feeling too much. Hold it level right there. Probably moved. As you can see behind me there, we got the outside corner post of the back in line here. So we're gonna add a screw around the corner of each post and run a line so that we can make sure that the interior posts are perfectly straight. We'll run that line so we know we have this way taken care of and then we'll run a tape measure off of our back post over there, which is kind of our starting post. We'll run everything off of that one. I put it in the middle. Everything seems to be a little bit close to the edge of the hole on this side, so hopefully we're okay there. But we'll use that post as kind of our, our cornerstone and run everything off of there. Drop it all the way in. Yep, all the way down. Into the middle, yep. Now pull it up. You can stand right over the hole. Just don't dump everything in the hole. There you go. I'm going to be using these post saver sleeves. Never used them before, but uh, in theory you should get 20 more years out of the post because you're protecting the area that gets oxygen, where the rest of it is going to be underground. So you saw me put the post in the ground, I marked where the ground is about going to be, and now I have an ideal ground line section on this post saver, and we're going to heat shrink it onto this post. So I'm just going to bring that mark roughly into place, We'll shrink it down, roll some water to press it into place, and then we should have really long life out of this post. You got a roller with a little bit of water in it, press down hard. You're just cooling off the Pulling it off a little bit and then pressing it down. Okay, I'm going to turn it. Keep going.
All right, we're sitting pretty good here, looking nice and straight, but we're running out of daylight and we're running out of kids' help. But I did learn something that I wanted to share. As you know, we got water in the holes. I discovered that instead of just pumping it out and then augering to get the last little bit that we missed, which we didn't get with the auger because of the pile of dirt on the side, didn't think of that until today. What I ended up doing was pushing that dirt into the hole to kind of get that wet sludge on the bottom to wick some of that moisture into that new dirt and it cleaned up the bottom of the hole much much better and I didn't have to do any manual post hole digging which is always good. Looking pretty good. 17 and a half looking Got the first fencing panel up. I just did that one on my own because I really needed to figure out what I was doing. But now I can build the other ones and show you guys what's up. Let me show you real quick the architecture or the design of this. So we have a dado on the top. Can't really see it there. Got a dado on the side. Got a dado on the other side. But I didn't want to put a dado on the bottom because I was worried about water pooling up in there and rotting out the board prematurely. So the dados for the sides and the top are an inch and a half in which is obviously the width of a two by four. And then on the back of the fencing right here, this is just kind of screwed in with some Power Pro screws on an angle and uh, not too bad. The dados I did over on the table saw, which we'll run in and do that again for all these other ones. So I'm going to, this is a 12 foot two by four. We're going to cut off the roughly five foot sections of all of them, go in and do the dados, and then we'll bring the cordless miter saw out here and actually cut them to the proper dimensions we need because not all of these are perfect. No matter how hard we tried working in the mud, not all the posts are exactly the same distance apart. So we'll kind of need to customize them to what's out here. Yep, I know pressure trees down the tools, not good, but I'm using a heavy coat of my Teflon blaster on here just to make sure we uh, keep that pressure treatment off of there and we'll make sure we clean it up really well when we're all done. I got a dado stack set up to three eighths of an inch which accepts the four by four square hog wire fencing or sheep wire fencing that we are using for this fence. Remember, we only need the top and the two sides to get the dados.
That's perfect. Right there. Anyway, got all my measurements. You guys know how we're building the fence. Cue the time lapse. We knew when we set the level for the fence that we were going to be high on one side and low on the other. And uh, we kind of split the difference. So over there, we were up in the air. Over here we are into the ground about two inches and uh, it's not even everywhere so it's not two inches all along the whole fence so we just need to cut some areas real quick. Alrighty, quick update. It's been a few minutes and today is April 30th. We got all six beds in, one short one right there. And we have the front post in. We waited on the front post so we could get the gravel out to here. We do have one more row of gravel to do, but it rained a lot yesterday. So we're gonna give it another day to dry before wrecking the yard with the machine. Hopefully we don't wreck it so much. I'm gonna build these last couple right now. So I wanted to take that measurement so we can make them different if we need to. effort to keep our gravel in the garden and not in the yard. I'm going to add a level board on the bottom of the gate and the gate will ride just above this so that you kind of step into the garden a little bit. 45 so it's nice and smooth on the side here and uh, we do have it level and we're going to use our trusty two and a half inch power pro screws to get everything in place. Kayla and I built this gate right here. Obviously it's on a 45 and we're using some heavy duty hinges to install this thing. And I'm going to try to mount the gate latch on a 45, but we'll see if that works. I will have to bend the connection point, the locking point. Hopefully we don't break it. Well, this didn't break, so that's cool. So we're looking for something just like this. Mount this guy here somewhere. 
this guy here. You should be good to go. Big improvement right there, one little piece. As you can see, the fence is looking fabulous over there, but those are four inch squares, which is not gonna stop a rabbit. So on the bottom of the fencing, we're gonna be using some of this. This is smaller than chicken wire. I don't know what this is actually called, but this is what we have. We had uh, two rolls of these when we bought the house, so we're gonna cut them to 16 inches, which will fit along the bottom of the fence right there. And we will use some chain link loops to uh, fasten them in place. Delta, get your big old head out of the way. <laughs> Lastly, we are gonna add some post caps, and as you can see, I painted them the same color as the roof back there, so I think they should look pretty cool. Want to add some post caps so that we don't have any rotting on the top of these poles prematurely. Using some tight bond construction adhesive here, just a quick dabble in each corner, and we will push the cap down on top of that. Check and make sure we have some adhesion. Got a little bit there, and that should be good enough. Wind shouldn't be taking these anywhere. These two posts by the gate, we're going to add these little guys that are solar and have an LED on them. So that's kind of cool. And uh, they are black if we end up not liking them. These are held on with a screw so we can pop these off and paint them red. There you go. Let's see how they look.